My name is Suzanne Rybczynski. I'm a pediatrician at Kennedy Krieger Institute and assistant professor of pediatrics at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. It is my pleasure to tell you about our research on suicide risk screening in pediatric neurodevelopmental clinics. As rates of suicide have dramatically increased over the last three decades, our organization developed a plan to screen all children for suicide risk who presented to medical clinics. Patients aged eight years of age and older presenting to outpatient medical clinics were eligible for screening. Registered nurses administered questions as part of routine triage. Patients or their parents and guardians could refuse screening. We chose to use the Ask Suicide Screening Questions or ASQ tool for our screening program. A yes to any of these questions represented a positive screening. If a screening was positive, the triage nurse notified the appropriate physician or nurse practitioner. An appropriate plan was then formulated based on the risk assessment. The purpose of our study was to describe the implementation of a universal suicide risk screening in pediatric neurodevelopmental disability medical clinics, analyze the demographic and clinical characteristics of eligible patients, describe outcomes of positive screenings, and describe factors that influence participation in screenings. Data were collected during a six-month study period from August 2017 to January 2018. There were 5,260 eligible patient visits representing 2,961 individual patients. 3,854 screenings were completed. There were 1,406 declined screenings with 1,354 at the request of the parent or guardian. The most common reason for declining screening was the patient's lack of cognitive ability to answer the screening questions. Overall, the rate of positive screenings was 6.8% for all clinics. Higher rates of positive screening were noted in autism clinic, chronic pain clinic, and concussion clinic. The most commonly endorsed question was, in the past few weeks, have you wished you were dead? Non-white minorities were less likely to endorse, in the past week, have you been having thoughts about killing yourself? But were just as likely as white patients to endorse all other questions. When compared to their female counterparts, males were less likely to endorse the questions, in the past few weeks, have you wished you were dead? In the past few weeks, have you felt that you or your family would be better off if you were dead? And in the past week, have you been having thoughts of killing yourself? Older patients were more likely to endorse. In the past few weeks, have you felt that you or your family would be better off if you were dead? And have you ever tried to kill yourself? This slide describes follow-up actions taken following positive screenings. 72 of the 187 individuals who screened positive were connected to new outpatient mental health services. Of note, new psychotropic medications were started in less than 20% of the visits. This slide describes outcomes for those who reported acute suicidal thoughts. 13 out of 14 visits had followed plans documented. In 8 of the 14 visits, patients were referred back to their treating psychiatrist or therapist. Eight patients required acute psychiatric evaluation. Three patients were evaluated in the emergency department. Three were admitted to intensive outpatient psychiatry programs, and two were admitted for inpatient psychiatric treatment. This study documents that it's feasible to implement universal suicide risk screening and youth with neurodevelopmental disabilities in outpatient clinic settings. Screening of the neurodevelopmental disabilities population is important as a 6.8% rate of positive screening was established, similar to rates in neurotypical children. As other healthcare institutions implement universal suicide risk screening, it is important that children with neurodevelopmental disabilities be screened for suicide risk and not be excluded from screening protocols. Our research demonstrated that this is especially important in children with autism spectrum disorder, along with children with neurodevelopmental disabilities and psychiatric comorbidities. Additionally, this study calls for more research into validation of the ASQ in the neurodevelopmental disabilities population. Thank you all for your attention to our study.